Hi kids, welcome to another week of Sunday School at Aldersgate. I am so excited this Sunday because for two reasons, three reasons, let's make it three. So we're gonna talk about being grateful again this month and our Bible story. I think it's one that we've never talked about before. It's been a long time. I think you're gonna hear some, a name that you've never heard before. And in the middle of the lesson, there's dancing. I know, how cool is that? So very, very, very exciting that you learn about a person you may not have heard of. We get to keep talking about being grateful and there's dancing. Because remember, we can celebrate gratitude and show great, our gratitude to God in a lot of different ways. We learned that in a Sunday school lesson a few weeks ago. But let's start with a prayer. Take a deep breath, focus on God. Dear God, thank you for another week of school, of family, of friends, of a warm bed, of our teachers, of our schoolwork, of everything that you provide for us. We are so blessed and have so many things that we can be grateful for. Help us to do things for those who are not, who don't have as many things and help us find ways to show love to everyone. Amen. So this week, now one of the people in this story, you're gonna know pretty well because we've talked about him a lot, but one of them is new and we're going to be, like I said, doing some dancing, but I'm just gonna start right away with the Bible because the story is in 2 Samuel. So it's in 2 Samuel and God's people, the Israelites, have been at war for a long time. They've been fighting for a really long time. Lots of fighting, lots of battles, lots of things going on. Armies fighting, swords clashing, soldiers running and yelling and arrows flying and all that stuff. So after all the fighting, David, there's that name you've heard a lot, David became the king of, over Israel. But when David took the throne, he noticed that something was missing, the ark, and not um, an ark like a boat. This was the ark that you learn about. When I, when, so when I say ark, I'm not talking about a boat. The ark was a wooden chest covered in, in gold. And the Bible, God had given very specific instructions on how to build it. And we can do a lesson on that sometime too. That would be a really cool lesson. It held the stone tablets of the 10 commandments. So God's 10 commandments were in this ark that was covered in gold and had very, God had, had said very specifically how, how it was to be built and how it was to be treated, handled, moved, all of that. God had, had given us some rules to follow. Kind of like now we're living with, we always live with rules, but we're living with some extra rules now. So it was really important to David that the Israelites got, carried that so that they had God's presence because that ark was God's presence. And so it was very important to David that the ark, that they have the ark, that the Israelites have the ark with them. So when they had the ark, they felt like they knew that God was with them. That was very important to them. But the ark, now stick with me here because this story gets a little complicated. The ark had been captured by the Philistines. So the Philistines had the ark, but God's people got it back. The Israelites got it back. So remember there'd been war and fighting, but the Israelites got the ark back. And David wanted to bring the ark home to Jerusalem. So he wanted to bring the ark home. And he wanted that, that was the capital city. So he wanted the ark to be with God's people so that they could feel God's presence and they could celebrate what God had done for them. Whew, okay, so what we know is they've been fighting. David wants to get the ark because it contains the 10 commandments and the presence of God. And he wanted to get that to Jerusalem. So I think we're caught up. But the ark was at a man's house named Obed-Edom. There's the name you might not have heard before, Obed-Edom. So the ark was at that man's house. So David heard that the ark was at Obed-Edom's house and it had been there for three months. So it had been there for three months. 
after it was recaptured, after the Israelites got it back from the Philistines. So because the ark was there, Obed-Edom and his family and his land and everything had been blessed by God. But David wanted to bring the ark to Jerusalem, and he was pretty excited about the whole thing. He was pretty excited about bringing that ark to Jerusalem. So he built a big tent where the ark was going to go, and he gathered some soldiers, and they marched to where that ark was being kept. And David and the men reached Obed-Edom's home, and they found the ark there. And the men lifted the ark up with poles, being careful to carry it like God told them to. Remember, there were rules, because it had gotten moved once, and they didn't follow the rules, and bad stuff happened. So they carried it the way God had instructed them to carry it, and they began to bring it back. They began the journey back to Jerusalem. And David was so excited and so thrilled that that ark was being taken back to Jerusalem. He was getting so excited and he was so filled with joy and he was so grateful for God and for what, for God's presence and for having the ark. He was showing gratitude. And are you ready for this? He stopped. So they're all, they're carrying the ark there. It's like a procession, almost like a parade. And David stopped the whole procession or parade. And I'm going to read this to you. And he started to dance. 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 14. He danced in front of the Lord with all his might. So we're going to, we're going to do some dancing. Hi, kids. I'm back again with Miss Jen and Miss Heather. And remember, this month we're talking about gratitude, being grateful. And today... Today's story is about David and a really cool way that he showed his gratitude to God. Because you'll hear in the story about the Ark of the Covenant and, and David and all the things that happened, but there's something really cool that David did. He taught us that you can show gratitude, you can show that you're grateful through celebration. You can have fun, you can celebrate, like a birthday party. You celebrate that that person was born. So David did something really cool. He was so happy, and you'll learn about that in the story, that he danced. Like a so, phrase dance? Like a phrase dance. So Miss Jen and Miss Heather, especially Miss Jen, are so happy <laughs> today that we're gonna celebrate God's love and show God our gratitude by dancing. I have, yes. I have so kids, you can play freeze dance at home to show your gratitude to God for being there and loving us. I have freeze dance music. So, ready? Kids, pause it, go get your music, and dance with us. We're ready. They don't need music. I have it. Okay, go. I think Miss Jen's taking stuff off the shelf. Miss Heather's doing the swimming thing. Oh, oh, what's up? This is Pumba. Grace. The sprinkler. The swimmy. I don't know. I'll make that up. Okay, kids. Go dance and celebrate how much God loves us. Show your gratitude to God by dancing. Bye, kids. Bye, kids. Bye. Oh my goodness, that was so much fun. We don't know what David's dancing looked like, but we sure did have a lot of fun dancing because we can show our gratitude to God through celebration. We can show our gratitude to God through celebration. And sometimes people dance to celebrate. And so David danced the whole way back to Jerusalem. Isn't that amazing? He danced the whole way back. And they were blowing trumpets and the men were excited and they celebrated the whole place. It was like a party. They were, they were just so happy to have the ark and to have, feel that presence of God that they showed their gratitude by celebration. So we can show our gratitude in celebration. Thanksgiving Day is a celebration. I don't know, some of you might dance on Thanksgiving Day. That might be fun. Maybe it's a Thanksgiving Day dance party at your house to show our gratitude to God and to show that we can be thankful and show that gratitude through celebration. So today, we need to remember that we can show our gratitude to God by celebrating God, by
by singing and dancing and showing that joy. God likes that. And that's what David did. So dancing to show gratitude, singing to show gratitude, those are all pray, ways to praise God. Isn't that amazing? God, our God is pretty amazing. Wow. So friends, that was a great story. And I hope that you'll go to the Bible and you'll learn more because there's more to that story. There's more to that story that you can discover with your families. And it's pretty cool that we learned Obed-Edom, someone most of you have probably never met or heard about. So thank you for coming today and listening and dancing and celebrating God's love with us. Let's pray. <sighs> thank you, God, for reminding us that we can celebrate all that you have done for us. Thank you so much for the example that David gave us in our story today. He didn't worry about what others were thinking. He was so filled with joy. And he was so excited to show his gratitude for your love that he danced. And he danced and sang and trumpets blew. And we can do those things too. We can show our gratitude through celebration. We want to celebrate you. Please help us to do that. Help us remember all the amazing things you've done in our lives and remind us to always say thank you. We love you and help us remember always only Jesus. Amen. Bye, everybody. See you next Sunday.